Hello and welcome back to the Pattern Course Sports presented by Prospect Apparel. Today we are joined by the Cage Warriors Bantamweight Sam Kelly. How are you doing today? I'm all good, brother. Are you? I'm all right. Uh, so obviously you're coming off a big win over the weekend. It took you about 10 seconds. There's not a mark on your face. How good does that feel to, you know, go into a fight, have that long training camp and leave unscathed? Oh, very good, mate. It was a long guy training camp, to be honest, mate. It was, uh, yeah, definitely put in the work on this one. Uh, and then it obviously all paid off on the night for me. Uh, it couldn't have really gone any better if I'd, uh, if I'd have tried writing it down beforehand. And I want to ask you, before we get into that fight, the, your nickname is quite an interesting one. You know, it's not one that you hear most. Most times, you know, you'll hear the killer, the assassin or something in MMA. But the Mighty Mole isn't. A very common name, and it's quite unique. What what were the origins of that name? Well, basically, I've got this little, uh, what my mum would call a beauty spot on my face there, but all my friends, especially through school, liked to tell me that it was a mole. So my name in school was the mole, the mole man. So then I got into fighting when I was like 21. People still call me the mole. I said, let's just roll with the mighty mole. May as well embrace it, right? And then a star was born. And star was born. <laughs> well, I think your your first win alone was a star making performance, and then you knock out a guy in ten seconds. That's an even better star making performance. So, what did you take away from the win you had? I believe it was in November, your Cage Warriors debut that you took into this one. That I mean, we didn't really get to see any new skills. I think you just you put them out quick. But you know, were there any new skills you added from that fight? Um. I've learned a ton of stuff, mate, in this camp. I've um, I've been going up to spending time with James Doolan and the lads at a higher level. Uh, when I'm going up there, I'm training like three times a day with them, which I don't get the chance to do when I'm at home because of work and whatnot. So up there, I've just been able to seclude myself um, away from any distractions and just fully engross myself in the, uh, in the training. And the amount of little details I'm picking up from him and the lads down there has been great. Probably spent about 11 days in total down there, but obviously times that by three with the amount of training sessions. It's, it it take me like, it take me over three weeks to do that many at home. Um, and I'm training with um, Martin Stapleton as well and the lads at SPG Rochdale. He's just showing me little details in, in um, aspects of MMA that I'm picking up and just sticking in there. Been wrestling with Jack Cartwright. And then I've got my good mate, Jamie A, as well, who's always teaching me new things in grappling. So I'm just getting better and better all the time, mate. I, I put the work in. I'm always at training. I don't really let excuses get in the way. And, yeah, and when I look back and I've had this attitude for quite a while, I, I just keep getting better and better, mate. And uh, let's let's get right into the fight, right? I wanted to ask you, yeah. it, you, didn't, you didn't get to show it, but... Unless this was the game plan, what was the game plan going into this one? Um, well, <laughs> well, well, apparently he's the striker and I was the grappler. Um, so we said let's just go in. We knew he likes. He normally likes to throw a lot of kicks. He throws a lot of um, leg kicks, a lot of high kicks, and he switches stance a lot. So we said the pressure is key. I was going to pressure him, pressure him, hit him with some heavy hands. I didn't think he would go down as easy as he did. So I thought I would have ended up grabbing a body lock and getting him onto the floor and doing some form of strangulation on him. Um, but I didn't need to, and that was all she wrote. And uh, you, I noticed on your social media, you know, he kind of said some things about you before the fight. You know, he said he was going to beat you up and stuff. And you've been talking. So how, how much did that, like, motivate you in your camp? say, okay, I, I got to put this guy out quick? Uh, to be honest, I actually didn't see anything he said on the build-up to this fight uh, because I just don't look. Um, and I'm not, it doesn't really bother me at all. I think it's... When I read stuff that people write about me, it's just like, give me off or anything. I, it just makes me laugh. Um, but back in August, I, there was talks of me fighting him on a regional show. Um but I was in talks with Cage Warriors at the same time. So I decided to sign for Cage Warriors. And 
and Cage Warriors, once you've signed for them, they like to announce it, so you're not allowed to announce it until they announce it. Uh, but I've never actually fully said, yeah, I'm going to fight him on said date. It had just been spoken about, like I've spoken about millions of fights before. And uh, and he took that as that I was pulling out of a fight with him and I was scared of him, blah, blah, blah. So I've had a little grudge against him since then, really, because it was just complete and utter nonsense. But uh, he got his comeuppance for it anyway. And uh, the crowd support you had was absolutely insane. You know, the commentators were talking about how amazing it was. And then when you dropped them, I mean, it was so loud. How, how did that feel? You know, when you, when you dropped them, did you hear the initial the boom of the crowd or did it only set in after the referee pulled you off? Yeah, you can hear the pop. Um, and it's crazy, mate, there was only 10 of them in there. Uh, but with it being such a small studio, it was just echoing and bellowing around that arena. Uh, I've, I'm well known for having very loud and passionate fans. Like, at the last Manchester one, I, I probably did an easy over 100 tickets and it was just electric. Uh, and obviously, me only getting 10 this time, because of the size of the arena, it didn't really touch the sides with the people that wanted to go. But um, it probably sounded like there was about 100 of them in there anyway. It did, you know, that studio, it's small, but it's awesome, isn't it? I, I, think, it's su- it's, I think it's super, super neat. And uh, I want to ask you, you know, because the fight was so short and you have no injuries, is there an ideal time when you would like to get back in there? I know the Manchester card's coming up uh, next month. I don't know if you want that quick of a turnaround or you want to wait a little longer. Well, I'm actually going to Jamaica in the morning for my wedding. So oh, that's congratulations. It. So there ain't going to be no training for a good couple of weeks. Uh, and then when I get back, we'll get back to it and we'll work it out. There's, um, I think I'll be on, I'll be on Manchester at the end of September, but I wouldn't mind maybe squeezing one in before then. I think they've got Rome at the end of July. That, uh, that date probably works for me as well, but um, we'll see. We'll just see what they say, see who they throw at me. I'm not that picky, have, really. Do and do you have an idea for an opponent, maybe? You know, a guy you would like to fight on that Cage Warriors roster? Yeah, I've not really thought about it, to be honest, mate. Uh, I don't really, obviously, that Pavu I just fought, he trains at a gym 20 minutes from my house. And I won't, I won't mind fighting like a European or something. You know, someone who I've never heard of before, something different. So that Rome card at the end of July, fighting an Italian on there would make perfect sense to me. We'll just see if uh, see if Cage Warriors think the same. And um, yeah. So you you don't have necessarily an opponent in mind, but you ha- you mentioned the date, the Rome date. I didn't know they were coming back in July. I know I believe it was May sixth that they announced. But so when you're a Cage Warriors fighter, I always wanted to ask, like, do you have like the, almost like all the dates for the year and you can almost like pick and choose where you would like to fight? Uh, I think they've, they've publicly released them this time. Um, they've, or they're showing like so many in the, in the not so distant future and Rome is one of them uh, because that comes before the next Manchester one. Um, and... I only wanted to be on the either the last week's old two or the BT Sports Studio one because I thought if I'm not and then I've got my wedding, then it's going to be like nearly 10 months or something maybe. If it's my fight in November. I didn't really want to sit on the shelf for that long. You know, I've got some, well, I've definitely got some good momentum now. I just want to keep building on it really. And you mentioned the momentum. I want to ask you, you know, what's your plan for 2023? You mentioned the wedding, You, which congratulations, by the way. Uh, Thank you. You mentioned wanting to come back late July, September kind of time. So is that the two fights a, a year? Is that your plan, two fights per year? Or do you want to get one yeah. more in, late in the year as well? So I'd, I'd, ideally, I'd like to have three this year, at least. Maybe even four. Depending on obviously situations, it's a sport where you can pick up little niggles and whatnot. If I had four fights, that'd be perfect, and they all went my way. And then, and then it's, I think uh, it won't be far off a title shot, really. Then, yeah, for sure. And uh, so, this next part of the show, it's more like more personal life based. There's some things to do with fighting, some not. I call it quick fire, but it doesn't have to be quick fire. So, 
let's go right into it. Uh, what's your yeah. favorite movie, man? Movie, uh, Django Unchained. Django Unchained. Favorite TV show? Favorite TV show. Well, pretty boring. Match of the day, football. Uh, it's, it's a good one, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a favorite song or music artist? Favorite song or music artist? Um, we're gonna go with. I'm going Jamaica, so it's gonna have to be some of Jamaica at the start. Bob Marley, Zimbabwe. Perfect. Uh, do you have a favorite fighter of all time? Like you know, boxer, MMA, Muay Thai. Do you have someone that you always looked up to, and now even like a current one? Um. Well, when I first noticed MMA, it was John Jones that caught my eye. Uh, I remember just watching videos of him on YouTube doing all his spinning elbows and thinking, wow, what is this? Um, and then, so it's probably John Jones, early John Jones when he had his night shots on and all that. that is, that's what gripped my attention. And the guy's just a beast, isn't it? Yeah. What, what did you think of his, his heavyweight title win earlier this month? Uh, well, same for him as me, really. It couldn't have really got any better. Uh, I think there was a very, very big, bigger uh, skill, gap in skill when he came into the grappling. So he's definitely got a better, bigger test on his hands with uh, Stipe. But I think, um, I think he'll come through that test as well. And uh, do you have a favourite fight of all time? Like, outside of yours? Uh, favorite fight of all time. What's been an absolute banger? Well, you got the Jones Gustafsson one. That was a legendary fight, wasn't it? That's that's a good one. And uh, do you have a favorite fight of yours? I know you can't get better than the last one, right? I mean, but you know, <laughs> would you class that as your favorite one of all time? Like of your uh, one? for how it went and whatnot. Um. Yeah, it couldn't have gone any better. Um, and obviously doing it on a stage like Cage where he's meant. But I think the win over Eglin is my most credible win, so I'm probably going to say that. And uh, have you had any funny interactions with another fan or a fighter backstage? Uh, I was speaking to De to Silva, who fought uh, Pab's brother. Yeah. He beat him. On the state castle, we was warming up with each other in the back, and we was having a laugh at a joke. And he was playing all this like samba music and whatnot. And he was just a funny guy, mate. We was we spoke since through Instagram, and he what a little legend, man. He's he's nuts. I mean, watching him like he was popping <laughs> and blocking back to the corner after getting rocked at the end of the round. Mate, he is one crazy man. I'd I'd seen it. I'd passed him in the hotel a few times, and he was proper happy and letting on and all that. But I didn't I didn't know who he was at first. And then obviously once I realised and was warming up in the black, we were chatting and whatnot, and yeah, we just got on, man, it was good. And uh, do you have a favourite video game of all time? I don't know if you're a big video game guy. Football manager. Football manager. So, oh, well, then I can ask you, who's your favourite football team? Man United. Uh, I'm a Liverpool fan, so... <laughs> oh, yeah, interview's done. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, dream vacation spot. I know you're going to Jamaica tomorrow. Is that was that your dream spot? Yeah, well, I've been a few times, so I'll probably I'm gonna to have to say Jamaica because it's probably where I've been to most. And uh, to close out, if you want to shout out any sponsors or your social media merchandise, and here's your platform, man. Yeah. Oh God, put me on the spot. I hope I don't miss anybody out. But there it goes. Um, shout out Skin Lab by Alex. JPR Sports Therapy, Eric's Gear, Combat Clothes, um, the North Fight Lab. Shout out Charlie Mitten Nutritionist as well. He made this camp an absolute dream as well. He really did help me. Um, who else have we got? Shout out Hench Supplements. And that is all I can think of off my head. And I'm just hoping that. Oh, and shout out Don Barber. He's sorted me out with a trim for my wedding today. Nearly forgot him. Glad I got that one in there. That's pretty much a well done, I think. And uh, your social media, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, what, what you got? Uh, so I'm Sam Kelly MMA on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. Perfect, man. Thank you so much for joining me on the show. It was a, it was a great chat, man.
No problem, mate. Hopefully we can do it again sometime. After my next explosive win. Exactly. <laughs>